Hello folks and welcome back to Junior TV. This time, the RCA Select Division CED system. I got this thing not so long ago for a very reasonable price, $60. <laughs> and uh, it works. Needs a new stylus though, I believe, because you'll see why. Anyways, so uh, this one is one of the earlier models, the uh, SFT100W. And uh, they're very simple. This this is uh this one came out in 81 or 82. I believe it's 81. And uh very basic, very primitive. It's got a, a rapid access buttons which you can see here. I don't know if I pointed at it right, but uh Next to that, there's the two visual search buttons, which, uh, they work, but sometimes they do have a tendency to get stuck on the discs, you know, in, like, one five-second loop, just jumping back and forth. So, usually, I use rapid access, because it rapid doesn't do that. And then, last but not least, to the far right of the picture, right next to the switch, actually, is... The pause button, the uh, fifth button. Um, yeah, it's just a pause button. When you use it, it, t it, it pauses the movie and makes the screen go black. What's interesting about these earliest models is they're extremely basic. There's no electronic loading system of any kind. You have to do it all manually. So you can see... When I move that switch down, you can see that now it is blinking L on the screen, signifying that I need to install a disc. And you might have noticed that a little door moved down inside of the slot. This is to prevent you from, uh, you, you know, putting another disc over the one that's already in and loading it when it's in the play position. What this also does is it actually lowers the platter inside of the machine to accept a disc. Because when you raise up the switch, it raises the platter up as well and brings it into contact with the stylus or needle or whatever. So let's load in a disc. This particular one here is fame because it's I got I got it dirt cheap six dollars I think it was I would not recommend putting anything on top of the machine unless it's pretty light because my particular machine doesn't like that don't know why all right let me get it set up to view the TV Okay, with me today I have my trusty Philco Space Age TV here that I uh, had to, re I got it very cheap, $20 at a junk shop, T restored it, it's all nice now. Anyways, let's turn on the select division. Making some noise, putting the stylus on the disc. All the noises right now are coming from the select division. That flickering is what I mentioned earlier about the uh, stylus being broken. So, not going to show too much here, but uh, gosh, because of that big scary warning at the beginning there. This particular TV is in black and white, but the color works. I have a color TV I would use with it, but it's. It's kind of tucked away right now, can't get to it, so you can see it's flickering a lot because uh, that's why I think it needs a new needle, stylus, whatever. And they aren't cheap, there's only one person I found who sells them, 60 bucks for a new, that's how much I've got the darn machine for, so let's hear what the sound sounds like, shall we? Remember, remember. 
Sun's pretty okay. What's really interesting to note is when the TV flickers, the sound is not affected. So, could be the select division circuitry or maybe the disc. I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell. So, uh, this is what this looks like. <laughs> Alright, let me turn that off. Alright, it seems I left out some features I just realized. <laughs> so, let me show you some various functions. I'll leave it on the TV here because the buttons are very self-explanatory. I will now press the visual search fast forward button and you'll see the picture will advance. At, I believe this is either two times speed or maybe not nah, is two times speed I believe. You can see it does that. When it gets all fuzzy like that that usually means that it's having a problem, you know, jumping around on the disc. And so I don't, I just stop when it's doing that. Rewind is also very explanatory. You press the visual search rewind button and there it goes. Now, uh, for rapid search, it's very simple. Also, re fast forward and rewind buttons, but this time, it just blacks the screen. This is forward, and you can see the playtime indicator, or you can't see, but the playtime indicator tells you where exactly you are. Same thing with rewind. So, very simple buttons. When you want to pause it, it does not act like DVD or VHS where it shows you a uh, image on the screen. Here it's paused now. The screen shuts off and you can see that a P is blinking on the select division. When you want to play again it's extremely simple. You just press, uh, if my camera would focus, Anyways, when you want to play, it's extremely simple. You press pause again. There's no play button, you just press pause. And there it goes. So, yeah, I'm going to shut that off now. When you want to unload it, when you want to unload it, it's extremely simple. According to the manual, all you do, you push down on the switch and... I have seen this operate before, and all it does, that noise you heard is just the disc spinning around on the platter when the platter isn't moving. Then you insert the sleeve and pull it back out, and there you go. Remember though, it's a good idea when you're doing this, uh, let me get that in frame, it says side one up here. And you want to match that to the, you know, first side. It's not like it'll affect anything, but it's just convenient, you know. You put in side, what well, you're expecting, side one, and it's side two. That's annoying. That's all for now. At some point, pretty soon, I'll take you into the insides. And do a much better shot, much better narrated video. This was just to show you that I'm trying to work on content. I've just been busy. Got a lot to talk about.